the Israeli Navy or the IDF as a whole does not have any intention whatsoever to get in some kind of a confrontation. On the contrary, we are concerned with one thing, the safety of the people in Israel. And when you have a marine blockade because you have terror from the sea, you have to enforce this marine blockade. I remind the viewers that only six months ago we had a civilian ship coming into Israel from uh, another country filled with weaponry and ammunition. It was destined to Hamas and Hezbollah. And we cannot allow a situation in which the sea is an open front for weapons. This is why we are here, to make sure that the, Israeli, the Israelis are safe and sound. I don't think that um, anything went really wrong. I really think that we have prepared for a different type of scenarios, such as violence, uh, extreme uh, scenarios. But we did not expect that uh, high level of resistance, you can say. We have prepared, and you saw in five out of the six uh, boats, we had no problem. Uh, the captain agreed to change the route of the boat towards Ashdod uh, port. Not even one bullet was fired. The problem was at the Mavi Mamara boat, in which there was a cell of approximately 30 extremists that had only one thing in mind, to lynch the idea of soldiers. Eventually, the goal was achieved. Eventually, all six boats have returned to the Israeli shore, just like the goal of the operation said to do. But when you have people that are lynching you, when your life uh, is under uh, um, a threat, then you have the right to open live fire, which we did. And the only people that were hit from this fire were the ones that were violent, the ones that were extreme, the same people that tried to kill our soldiers. Look, only three out of the six boats had humanitarian aid. We already unloaded the boats of the Haid. It's something like 30 trucks. On an average day, we have between 100 and 160 trucks entering Gaza anyway with humanitarian aid. Which means that the aid, so-called aid that they brought, which includes expired medicine, for example, maybe makes up of one-fifth of what is entering Gaza in one day. There is no humanitarian crisis in Gaza. It's important to know that. It's not that the situation is perfect, but all the essentials are there. Every day, the mechanism is very simple. The Palestinians send us a list of things that they need uh, to, to go through the border to Gaza, through the NGOs, and we approve these things, and they go every day starting from hygiene products, summer camps products, medicine, food of all sorts, meat, anything goes in. So it really is not a problem. And I heard one of the claims was that building materials is not allowed into the Gaza Strip. This is incorrect. In 2009, over 9,000 tons of building materials entered Gaza, including wood, windows, aluminum profiles, and cement. The limitations are that we have to know exactly to which building project these building materials go to. Otherwise, we will find them inside the Qassam rockets. The Qassam rockets are filled with cement. The aluminum pipes are actually the pipes that the rockets are made from. We cannot allow to be under a threat, and therefore we have some sort of a limitation on these goods. Well, we found some interesting things uh, on board of the Mavi Mamra. For example, we found shells, empty shells, shells that were fired. But these are bullets that the IDF does not use. So one of the assumptions that we are looking into is the fact that they use some kind of guns or heavy weapons and threw it to the sea. Another thing we found is money, a very large sum uh, of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars that were in envelope on these people. Now, one of the assumptions that we're examining now is that they were paid to go aboard this ship. If you're a peace organization, if you deal with human rights, then I don't expect you to prepare dozens of knives dozens of metal rods, saws, broken glasses, I don't know, any human rights organization in the world, that this is our t its tools. And here in this situation, we saw an angered mob that had only one goal, and it was not the humanitarian aid. It was to lynch IDF soldiers. 
And on the Mavi Mamura, there was no humanitarian aid, just extremists. The tactics of the Navy did not change from the first flotilla to the second time which another boat came. Did not change. The only change was the people. We saw on the Rachel Corey real, true peace activists. No resistance, no violence whatsoever. Their goal was really, as we understand, to bring aid to Gaza. On the other hand, the flotilla of the Free Gaza Movement and the IHH, we saw terrorists. So while our tactics did not change, only the passengers changed. Our number one concern is not PR. Our main concern is the safety of the people in Israel. You know, I was standing in Ashdod last Saturday, last Shabbat, when uh, the Rachel Corey boat uh, came inside. And in that weekend, we had two rockets that were launched from Gaza into Israel. This is a constant situation. This is a terroristic situation in which we cannot allow to, um, to let our civilians experience. And therefore, we will do the utmost in order to prevent this terror from entering through the sea to Israel. The message is very clear. If you are truly representing a human rights organization, and if you truly care about the welfare of the people in Gaza, we have no problem of transporting the goods from the Ashdod port after inspecting it security-wise and then bringing it to the Gazans. If not, then I understand it's provocation because anyone that wishes to help the Gazans should and welcome to bring his goods to the Ashdod port. We will inspect it and then we will bring it to the people of Gaza.